it's a very special celebration for all of us here at WUSA 9 this year. It is our 75th anniversary, and we want to invite you to celebrate along with us. That's right. Our own Leslie Foster is here to share more about this special time in WUSA 9's history. Hi, yeah, Leslie. telling stories is what we do, sharing stories. We've been doing it now for 75 years, and that's something of a milestone, we think. A milestone we'd like to mark with you. So if you don't mind, we're going to take a few moments to share our story, the story of WUSA 9. It begins back on January 16, 1949. On that winter day in D.C., station WOIC flipped the switch to begin full-time operation. Yes, WOIC, our call letters back then. But not for long. After just a few months, CBS and The Washington Post bought the station and changed the call letters to WTOP. We grew quickly, and the station moved to a state-of-the-art broadcast facility in 1954, 40th and Brandywine Streets in Northwest. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Broadcast House. Broadcast House, a house we called home for quite a while. After years of hoping and months of planning and weeks of uh, construction and preparation were at last ready to show you our new home and we're pretty proud of it. Now, this is the house that we live in. But a house is really not a home until you fill it with family. And we did. Like reporter Donna Douglas. I never know where they're going to send me next, whether it's riding a fire engine, being a waitress at People's Drugstore, or driving a taxi cab, or even selling peanuts at Griffith Stadium on opening day. News anchor Don Richards. Reporting the news from anywhere is a pretty serious business, but reporting it from Washington, the news capital of the world, makes it especially important that the news we bring you is accurate and up to date. Hi there, Rangers. At Broadcast House, there was room for extended family too, like Ranger Hal. Well, good morning, good morning, good morning. How are you? America had Captain Kangaroo, DC had Ranger Hal. Instead of starting school, I, I mean, know. I'm sure uh, I'll like the teacher, but... Uh... Our family also made room for a young radio newsman. He was planning to board a plane to cover the Korean War. Well, that flight left. But Walter Cronkite's career was diverted when CBS brought him to Channel 9 to do television. I did the uh, two broadcasts for almost four years. Never wrote a script. Uh, I did the, both of the broadcasts. Uh, uh, extemporaneously. It was, uh, it was uh, great, great fun. We, uh, we had a little two-desk operation in the basement at uh, 40th and Brandywine Street. Of course, Washington was a great station to, to break into television news and to be able to experiment with television news. An experiment that grew in size and scope, and we kept growing with it, in ways that blazed new trails in 1969, Max Robinson joined the Eyewitness News team, becoming the district's first black anchor. When we do the 11 o'clock news, we have to be aware that this is the last chance a viewer gets to find out what happened during the day. His partners, J.C. Hayward, the first woman to anchor a newscast in Washington, Maureen Bunyan, and Gordon Peterson. Gordon is one of the most fascinating people I've ever met. I have never met before an ex-Marine captain who was also an ex-monk. If you want to find out something badly enough in this town, you can find out about it because the town runs on paper. And somewhere there is written down what you want to know. What you want to know, what you need to know, it's been our focus from the start. Does the news you watch answer the questions you'd ask? If you're watching our news, we think you'll say yes. Asking those questions over the years, reporters like Mike Buchanan covering the streets of D.C. I came to work at WTOP in 1970. The boss gave me a station ID card and a tear gas mask. <laughs> The anti-war demonstrations, almost daily protests in downtown Washington. It was an angry, ugly time. And there was J.C. Hayward reporting from half a world away. It's been two weeks since food was handed out. It is the only organization that has consistently fought for democracy. 
and Maureen Bunyan. Prime Minister Ohira says he would like Americans to pay more attention to Japan. In the late 1970s, an ownership change led to new call letters, WDVM, representing the District, Virginia, and Maryland. And in the mid-80s, under the Gannett Company, we became WUSA. Now from Channel 9, Washington's number one newscast, Eyewitness News. Through it all, we kept telling the stories that matter. <music> stories that mean something to you like a groundbreaking new medical treatment from reporter Steve Gindel. This magic box and a drug from ancient Egypt clear 95% of the cases. Then I saw this on Channel 9, and I immediately said, oh, I'm I just so glad. I said, I'm so happy that I finally found some help. One of my most rewarding assignments. And Andrea Rome with our breast cancer awareness campaign, Buddy Check 9. It just seemed that every time I saw Channel 9 News, you were talking about breast cancer. <laughs> and some can be life-saving. All right, Andrea, I will go examine myself, and I did, and I found a lump. Dave Statter leading a Get Out Alive fire prevention special. Down here we have a window. Admittedly, it's an unusual spot for a window, but it's an ideal location for our cameras to get a look at the fire we're going to set in this room. There are 11 cameras set up throughout the inside and outside of the house to give you views of fire you probably haven't seen before. The closed door upstairs can't keep out the smoke forever, but if you keep low, you can survive. It's breathable air down here. Any higher, it would be very difficult to breathe. Over the years, we've helped you navigate the roads and certainly the weather. Quick as a flash, the weather comes alive on Eyewitness News. With forecasters Gordon Barnes. Gordon Barnes says something, I believe him. Would I lie about the weather? Doug Hill, Topper Shutt, and the entire weather team. When it comes to sports, how about this team roster? Warner Wolf, Frank Herzog, Sonny Jurgensen, James Brown, and Ken Meese. I lost my place. Think anchoring's easy? <laughs> Try it now, pal. Try it now. And then there was Glenn Brenner, irrepressible, unforgettable, untamable, like a bull at a rodeo. Veteran cowboy Gerald James is listed in stable condition tonight after getting accidentally stepped on by a 1,600-pound bull at the annual Calgary Stamp. <laughs> <laughs> it's not funny. It's not funny. And it's, just, it's, it's one of those shows anyway. Asking for football picks from a nun. The New Orleans Saints at New England. Now you say that just because they're Saints. Right. Sometimes I don't go along with the Saints. They fool you. Excuse me, uh, officer. How you doing, sir? Fine, how you doing? I mean, what's the, uh, what's the chart? Oh, you got an over large um, weenie? weenie on the street, sir. When Washington went to the Super Bowl in 1988, we sent Mike Buchanan to the host city, San Diego. Oh, Redskin victory programs right here. Ole! Buck found a beach that was clothing optional. Do you feel nervous? Yeah, I do. I, I, uh, yeah, I do. Take off your clothes, you'll feel better. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're right. It does. It feels good. It does. Yeah, it does. <laughs> Oh, hail to the Redskins. <laughs> and that's the way it was. We're on the move, WUSA, 4100 Wisconsin Avenue. What do I need these for? Uh, because you're packing. Investigative files. In 1992, our Channel 9 family packed up again for another big move. I'm not going to miss anything about this building. It is ugly, it's dirty. Exciting. It's, it's, it's something new, uh, something to look forward to. Uh, of course, we're going to the state of the art over there. You're going to miss it? This building? Do you miss car accidents? No. We headed just down the street to a brand new broadcast house on Wisconsin Avenue Northwest. WUSA TV officially opened its new home today. WUSA's president and general manager, Hank Yagi, hosted today's ribbon cutting ceremony. This new facility is without doubt among the premier broadcast facilities ever built. We settled in quickly and kept doing what we do. 
Our open records investigation identified case after case, cruisers without flashing lights, where the police department gets officers who ran red lights off the hook. We have a level of fear that we're not used to. It's kind of unsafe right now. I never thought anything like this would happen in our neighborhood. We're scared to come to work. Were you scared? Yes. You go out in the morning, you don't never know if you're going to make it back. Eric Toth is serving a 25-year sentence at this federal prison. We spoke with him about his web of deception and how he stayed one step ahead of law enforcement for so long. I've just been thinking about my daughter, where she could possibly be at. Where do you think Militia is right now? I honestly can't answer that. In just the past three weeks, authorities say more than 50 persons have been arrested and over 100 guns have been taken off of the streets since Operation Ceasefire was launched. Remembering the moments that change our lives. Now 92 years old, Miss Hale shares her vivid memories of the 1963 March on Washington. To think of all the people that came here from so many places, and then I remember Martin Luther King up there on that podium and when he started giving his speech. My poor little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream today. And bringing you the big stories as they break. Art Castellano saw the plane and then the flames from over a mile away. He raced his SUV over medians and around barricades to get to the Pentagon. Hands and arms reached up through smoky windows. Our Bruce Johnson was the first to report Barry's death, and he joins us with more reaction, Bruce. Shock, stunner, mm -hmm. punch in the stomach, all yeah. of those things. This was the deadliest assault against journalists in the history of the United States of America. There's no mistaking what the survivors think the motive of the attack that happened here in this building at the Annapolis Capitol. Members from the three branches of government gathered on the west side of the U.S. Capitol to witness the peaceful transfer of power. So help me God. Congratulations, Mr. President. Just weeks after democracy was challenged by rioters. I was at risk of being stripped of and killed with my own firearm as I heard chants of kill him with his own gun. The police saying that crowd armed itself with anything it could find to attack officers. Our team here at WSA 9 has you covered this election day. Keep it here Tuesday for up to the minute results as they come in. At Channel 9, what matters is what's real. It's why we've kept our focus on our community. Whether it's those who need a lift up, those who care for our environment, or those who defend our country. Fall is here, so we're all going to be spending more time inside. And if you're anything like me, you probably have a lot of junk laying around. Well, here at WSA 9, we believe the environment matters, so we're taking care of it for you. Catching the rhythm of the city. It don't mean a thing if you ain't got the go-go swing. Is that what? Savoring the flavors. Ben's Chili Bowl has stood as a gathering place for locals and stars alike. You, know, you can come in here and you'll see a lawyer sitting next to someone homeless, eating, enjoying Ben's Chili Bowl. All along the way, we've used leading edge technology and innovation to share these stories every way we can. Oh, strike five, take it. And we now share stories in ways we never imagined when we flipped the switch back in 1949 through social media and streaming services with a team working round the clock every day of the week. Right now, we know no night in the DMV is the same. For speaker. At WUSA 9, we don't just tell the news, we pursue truth. It's a team as diverse as the community we cover, fostering new ideas and fresh perspectives, all the while staying true to our core mission, a mission now marking 75 years. Yes, over the years, the call letters have changed, the look of that nine has certainly changed. And you know the hairstyles have changed. There have been a hundred hairstyles. <laughs> Someone said she changes her hair like she changes her shoes. But here we are still, telling stories, sharing stories with you, from our family here at Broadcast House to your family and your house. So thank you for helping us celebrate the people who started it all, those who took up their baton and those who carry it on to this day.
This is Eddie Gallagher saying thanks to all of you at uh, your particular home for inviting us into your house from Broadcast House. Because we know none of what we do here is possible without you. Yeah, so here's to the next story and our next 75 years. humbling it is to be part of this long legacy of outstanding journalism at WUSA 9 and that was quite a look back Wasn't at our that history. quite a look back? I have to say we have to thank there was a team that put this together Absolutely. David Beardsley beautiful words the pro the producing prowess of Stephanie Wilson and Samara uh, Martin Ewing the incredible artistry of Larry Sendos, who is an editor here, and to Tom Buckley, who is not here with us anymore at the station, yeah. but is really an incredible archivist and helped us sort through all of this information to make this really, really possible. It's such a special story and so fun to look back at all the things that have happened in our city and all the people who made it possible for us to be here today. Well, and it was incredible too to see, you know, the letters of congratulations, the special proclamations that came in from the governors of Virginia and Maryland, DC's mayor celebrating with us. So to see all of those, that's what we have up here on the screen. What a moment. It's amazing to be this outlet of history and we have so much of that history in the building, a library of history, literally on our third floor. Yeah. We have stacks and rows and rows of tapes going back decades. And that's where a lot of that material that you saw drew from. But to know that that information is there to be able to look back on years from now, it's really special. That kind of makes us kind of yeah, push it up, yeah. right? Yeah, push up harder well, when you have folks who made it possible for us to do this. And you're going to have some special guests joining us for we some of the later are. shows. I'm not going to tell you though. You just have to watch. One of those it's going to be fun. All right. Appreciate that, Wes. <laughs> Thanks for bringing that to us.